Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Improvement Series. Last week we kind of talked about learning matchups and kind of like the, the process that I have and the way that I go about learning matchups in Smash. And today we're going to actually take that process and I'm going to show you physically doing the process. So it's going to be a little bit less structured than my other videos because I really don't know exactly where this is going to go. But uh, last time I pretty much said how I was going to learn this process by showing in detail actually learning a matchup with Pyramithra. Now I was kind of deciding like what, what matchup should I learn and I think the obvious answer for me was Steve because I, I have kind of been out of the competitive scene for a little bit so I really never spent the time figuring out what Steve does. So I really truly am like kind of starting fresh here. Like I... I don't really know how you counter most of his stuff. I've played it a little bit on For Glory. I've played it a little bit offline, but compared to matchups like, like like Diddy Kong, for example, right? I come from playing Diddy in Smash Four. I played him in Ultimate. I know how to fight Diddy. I know what his strengths and weaknesses are. And the same could be said against like a lot of other characters that I spent time on. But with like Steve and a lot of the new DLC, I'm kind of like out of the loop a little bit. So you can kind of see my process starting fresh. Now, in my last video, I talked about my three methods that I think are the easiest ways to learn a matchup. So one is by watching players that are better than you in the matchup. So I, I went on YouTube and I tried to find some videos, but unfortunately, I was actually really surprised. There's not that many videos of offline Pyramithra against Steve. So I kind of just grabbed a couple like online tournaments because that's the best I have to work with right now. Uh, so yeah, here was Spargo playing against the Steve at, uh, at the Juice Box, an online tournament. Uh, here is another online match, and uh, I found one, one offline match of Pyramithra versus Steve, so we're going to have to watch this one too. So that's one method we're going to use. Uh, watch yourself in the matchup. I, it's not that hard to come across as Steve on For Glory, so maybe I'll just play For Glory a little bit and then... When I find I'm up against a Steve, I'll start recording and then I can watch it back later and see where I'm doing well and what I need to work on. And uh, last, talk to others, share knowledge, and ask questions. Of course, we're going to do this on Discord because this is kind of the best way to do that in the character discords. So just to start out, I am in the matchup section of the Pyramithra character discord and I just searched for Steve. And there's going to be a lot of stuff there. Now, one thing I also did was I kind of just searched it on Google, beat Steve Smash, and I realized on Reddit, there was a lot of people like complaining about Steve and like, how do you beat this character? So uh, I found like all these Reddit threads of people like looking for tips against Steve. And so within these, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good, good nuggets of information I can learn from. And as well, I also found two guides. This one is what, nine minutes and this one is 14 minutes just about how to beat Steve. So that's going to help a lot. Now, the goal is what we're going to try to get to is a matchup guide that looks something like this, where I was learning how to fight Luigi in Smash 4 with Diddy. So I go over just like every little detail that I know, and then uh, hopefully we can get there with uh, starting fresh. So I talked about where, where to begin making this document, and I said start with the basics. So we're going to have to figure out all this stuff. And we're going to put it into Notion. This is my uh, note-taking app of choice for, for Smash. Uh, it's, I have a matchup section here, so we're going to just fill out as much as we can in Steve. So the goal, what we're going to want, all right, we need to get what to do in neutral game. We're going to need to do what to do in advantage state. Advantage. Disadvantage. My microphone is kind of in the way of my keyboard, so typing is a little bit awkward. Uh, okay, <laughs> so like just general strengths and weaknesses, but that kind of goes into like in his uh, advantage and disadvantage, but I'll just make a, a category for that at first. Like you could see his advantages and disadvantages in neutral game, his advantages in advantage, I guess that sounds really weird, but like what what is he good at that keeps him in the advantage state and stuff like that. Okay, anyways, uh, weaknesses and strengths. Uh, we also want to learn about his gimmicks. That's another reason I picked Steve. Steve has a lot of gimmicks that I don't fully understand. So I'm going to have to probably just go with like Smash Wiki or something and just learn how the mechanics of all of his mining works and how he upgrades everything and just knowing when I can punish that. And that kind of leads into the last one, what you can and can't punish. So 
without further ado, let's just kind of jump into it. Uh, so we've got weaknesses and strengths, neutral game, advantage, disadvantage gimmicks. So I think first of all, it's probably going to be best to just start with one of the video guides just because it's kind of got everything there. Uh, this one's only nine minutes, so I'm going to jump in and watch this. And then maybe I'll check back in with uh, my notes that I took. Okay, so we finished the two videos, and we've got a pretty decent start right here. Uh, the only thing is that these videos were very just like Steve General and nothing like specific for Pyra and Mithra. So like what they can do to punish this stuff. So I'm going to have to fill in the gaps just with my own Pyra Mithra knowledge if I can't find anything else uh, within like the Discord, for example. So I think my, my next play now is going to be to just look around in the Discord and see if I can find anything specific to Pyra and Mithra that they can do that will help punish uh, all this stuff that we just learned from those videos. So let's jump into Discord and see what we can find. Alright, well I feel like I've gotten most of the important stuff from Reddit and from these video guides, so honestly, like, this is a pretty darn good base. But now the, the thing that I'm left with is, alright, how does Pyra Mithra in particular deal with all these strengths and weaknesses and things that I've found? So the next obvious step for me is going to be to just watch the, the videos of top players and just like pay close attention to, to what they're doing and how they deal with all this stuff, keeping in mind like everything that I just learned. So we're going to do that. Um, I guess first, let's just uh, talk about what I found so far, all right? So stages, uh, I put in, I'm going to counterpick Battlefield Smashville. I don't know what to ban yet. I'll have to go and figure that out. Uh, so Steve is slow in the air and on the ground has the slowest initial dash So that makes it hard for him to keep up with your defensive options like rolls and jumps. So Yeah, just use utilize fast options and he's gonna have a hard time dealing with it uh, Because he has short jumps. He can't really chase you in the air very well So full hop aerials are a pretty good option in neutral His range is not that great. He's not like a He doesn't have like pyro range. So if I stay at like a decent mid-range his stuff won't be hitting me and I'll be able to punish his stuff on reaction as long as I'm out of range of like uh, unreactable minecart and stuff like that his out of shield options are pretty good so you have to be careful when hitting his shield he's got the, a really strong up smash but if you hit him from behind he's not gonna be able to hit it but he can also use aerials or a footstool into an anvil his approaches are pretty terrible so if I've got a lead I just don't go in but if he has strong materials, he doesn't really gain any advantage from that. And he doesn't gain any better ways to approach. So as long as I have the stock lead, I can kind of just chill. Keep center stage and just let him stay in the corner trying to get the materials or whatever. And what's he going to do to get in? Like minecart? As long as I'm at the right distance, I don't have to worry about that. The minecart is invincible on frames 1 to 17, but not Steve. So aim for Steve rather than the cart, just to be careful with that. So in the neutral game, at low percents... He's going to be looking for the jab string, and if he gets that, he's going to look for a spike or read your air dodge and try to like charge a smash. But uh, you can SDI up and away. Actually, I did. I, this is a, uh, a duplicate. I talked about SDI later because I did fix that. Okay, so scrap that. All right, minecart. Just jump over it and use the platforms to avoid it. So we're going to ban flat stages probably, like FD. Uh, when he's mining away, he has very few options to, and it has a lot of lag. So he can jump or shield, but there's like a decent amount of lag. So running up and grabbing him or hitting him with something fast is pretty viable as long as you make sure you're at the right range. When he's crafting, like physically putting the materials on the axe or whatever, uh, he can shield or jump, but again, it's a little bit slow. And when he's mining, that usually means he's running to the corner, but this is this is not bad because that means you can hold center stage and he's stuck in the corner where he doesn't have that many options to get in on you. So once he cuts off his own options, then you can read it and follow up from there. 
So advantage state, when you're juggling him, you have to watch out for anvil and minecart and space around it. So if he's above you, he's gonna like do the anvil, right? So come in from the side. If you're a little bit to the side, he's probably gonna do the minecart, so be ready to just jump over it and still hit him anyways. However, both of these options cost iron, so pay attention to what materials he has. Blocks can act as a shield in the air to get out of juggles. So when you're juggling and he's above you, he can just put down the block and then shield or not, not necessarily a shield on the block. Put down the block and that acts as a shield because you can't hit through it, right? And then he can get away for, for free, pretty much. So maybe instead of juggling him, it might be better to just get him off stage if he doesn't have the materials because that's where you have a, a really strong advantage state. Uh, his When he gets on the ledge, his ledge options are pretty good uh, because his ledge roll is pretty long, so it makes you space back a little bit. His ledge jump is strong because uh, he can ledge jump and then build the materials beneath him. I don't know what you call it. Like craft a, a block and then shield on it right away and it kind of cancels all of his lag and momentum. So that's really strong. Gotta watch out for that. Uh, when you're in disadvantage, when you're getting the jab combo, you gotta mix up SDIing away and SDIing in. Because if, either way, he can follow up on it. But as long as you're mixing it up, it makes it harder for him to read what you're gonna do. Uh, if he's doing the up tilt ladder where he goes like up tilt block and then like jump put down a block up tilt and keeps doing that You want to SDI it up and you can escape it Jab on shield has low lag. Oh, I don't want to underline that So you need a fast out of shield option to punish it or roll away. So my question is uh, Can I up B with Mithra? I'll have to mess around and test that later before I really know what I'm doing uh, he can mix up with jab on shield also and dash back minecart and that gets like the grab hitbox out Which is actually kind of similar to what I used to do with Diddy Kong where like you down tilt someone's shield And then you dash back and then side B and get the grab so definitely watch out for that uh, and He can also mix up by like jab your shield and then jump and anvil and it can shield break you if you're not careful uh, when he up B's he doesn't have very much lag, especially like when he's landing. So don't try to like charge an F smash or whatever. Just try to hit him with something quick. It gets scary when you're at high percents and he can knock you far enough away that he has time to get all the materials that he needs to edge guard you. So be really careful about getting knocked off stage when you're at high percents. Be careful about landing on platforms just above him because up smash lasts for days and he has up airs that are like really quick, like brawl Meta Knight up airs. Choo, 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 choo. Uh, where, where, I just lost my space. Where am I? Uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, if you recover a low, he can punish it really easily because he has all these great options. Uh, you want to be really careful and like really mix up your recoveries, but most importantly, just avoid getting put in this situation to begin with. Uh, if he grabs you in a position where he can forward throw you off stage, that's the easiest way that he can force you to recover a low. So now that you're forced into this situation, what, what do you have to watch out for? Well, he's got the down tilt fire, but if you're at a low percent and you like up B into the fire, you can just up B again really quick to go through and hit him. If not, you can maybe just air dodge to the ledge. If you're at higher percents, it's going to be a stronger option because it's going to send you too far to do that. And then you're probably dead. He also has the anvil he can throw down at you. If you're coming from a little bit more of the side, he can send the mine card at you. He can block you off with the off stage blocks. So that is just a situation you want to avoid entirely to begin with. Uh, so his gimmicks. The most important thing that I've figured out is that the minecart requires iron. So really pay attention to what materials he's getting. The diamond weapons are obviously more powerful. So watch out for when he has those. And the TNT block has a, he can trigger it. It'll also explode after eight seconds, I think it was. And anyone can actually trigger it. You could trigger it with a big hitbox or with the trigger and it explodes on the strong hits. Uh, when he has no materials, he can't build and his recovery is trash. So if you get him off stage, if you, if you play really aggressive early game before he gets materials, get him off stage. That's how you can get a lot of damage and punish him because he doesn't have the strong, uh, like really good uh, getting back on the ledge we talked about earlier. He just doesn't have that. So play aggressive early but once he gets the materials he already has them so all right whatever just play uh, just play in like mid stage and let him stay cornered now a question i have to figure out is minecart empowered by redstone i don't really know how that works so i will have to figure out the mechanics on that 
So I would say this is like, considering this took me like what, maybe an hour and a half tops. I feel like this is a really good like basic matchup thing. So you can kind of see where this goes, right? So I'm just slowly building out like random notes like this. Now we're gonna slowly transition into the next step, which is gonna be to turn this into like the matchup guide like I had here. You could kind of see how as I was talking, I kind of just did it as I was going. So I'm just gonna pretty much do, type it up how I was talking to you and make it into coherent sentences and try to explain things in a little bit more detail this way i'll like uh have a better understanding of it in my head and it'll like solidify the matchup knowledge for me uh the, a lot of this stuff is just vague general steve stuff so i really do want to learn a little bit more pyra specific stuff so my next step is going to be one i want to first actually i should probably do this first so first i need to watch these videos all right, get the Pyramithra specific stuff that I can find from them, add it to my random notes like this, then I can go into typing up the matchup notes as like the big uh, page. So we're going to do that. Let's jump into these uh, matches and see what we can find. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've taken all these notes on the videos, I have all these notes about Steve. It's going to be time to start putting this into like a real matchup guide. So I'm going to pretty much be taking all these things that I've, these quick notes that I just jotted down, and I'm going to be turning them into like coherent sentences and trying to like explain them in the sense of here's what you do and here's why you do it. So this is probably going to take a while, so I'm not going to like show it on camera, but that's going to be my next step. And I'll check back in when I have it written. Okay, so I finished up writing this matchup guide. If you want to read it, uh, link is going to be in the description below. This is also on my website, jjrockets.com. Uh, I pretty much just go in and talk about everything from a quick overview, the stages, how to play neutral game, uh, what to do in advantage in terms of juggling, edge guarding, ledge trapping disadvantage what to do about his shield pressure how to recover properly how to escape his combos and how to land safely now i, I just want to throw out the disclaimer that if you go to read this don't take this as like the end all be all of how to play this matchup perfectly instead i want you to think about this as more of a, a demonstration of my process that i go through to learn a matchup obviously i'm not like an expert at pyramithra yet and you shouldn't take everything that i say as like like a like a, a pure fact as i learn more about the matchup i will be editing this i'll probably be taking things out of this guide putting new things in it correcting some stuff you know so just think of it more of it this is the process that i go through and how i think about learning the matchups so as i said before it's really important that you have like a quick overview because when you go into the matchup you're not going to remember this gigantic guide so I try to just put in a, a brief overview at the top and then go into more details so that I fully understand it. Now the next steps that I would take if I was uh, trying to become a better expert on this matchup is now that I've actually like did the research, right? That's the first thing I do, did the research. Second, I watched the videos of other people playing the matchup. Third, I wrote the guide, but now I have to actually apply the guide into my gameplay. Now, also, when you're just playing, you're going to discover some things that you thought you knew about the matchup. Like, oh, maybe I thought I had a good understanding of the neutral game. But maybe after playing it, I'll realize I have a few more questions. And then I can go back, study more videos, and update accordingly. That's where, like, the end game is. It's just, like, applying everything to your, to your practice. And that will help you see where you have more questions and where you still have to learn. But overall, I would say this is, like, a pretty good, uh, like... A pretty decent start and this is just what i would suggest that you do if you want if you're struggling in a matchup because if you think about it like just a few days ago if i was going into a match against steve i didn't really have like a game plan going in i was kind of just swinging and hoping for the best but now that i just have this even if it's not perfect i'm still much better off than where i was in the beginning so anyways that's just how i learned the matchups again i'm not saying this is like necessarily the best or only way to do it this is the way that I do it, and I hope that you can maybe learn something from that. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you have any questions about this process, please leave them in the comment section below. Give me a like, 
subscribe, click the bell, you know what to do, whatever. All right, I'm done. Peace.